Chapter 11, Encounter Reveling in the outstanding victory, the ponies have earned a short breather, but the enemy hasn't raised the white flag yet. When the snow melts, a new mission begins. April 11th, 2019, 0700 hours, Griffiths, Griffith Palace Halls. The casualties sustained by the Griffith Army during the battle at Tur Burning Talon and the destruction of said superweapon were nearly crippling for them. Many saw that their glorious land wasn't invincible. They could, in fact, be defeated by the ponies. Needless to say, neither Black Star nor Red Cyclone, especially the latter, were pleased by this. They attempted to recruit additional soldiers to their army, but many Griffiths outwardly refused to join their ranks. It's those cowards! The sabotaging the uh, campaign! Red Cyclone yelled. He and Blackstar were traversing the halls of their palace. The Black Griffith tried to restrain his emotions. It would seem that we pay for the price of underestimating our foes. The Talon Squadron has nearly been decimated. That last battle didn't prove positive for the troops' morale. If we are to succeed in this war, we must devise a new strategy. Keep strategy to yourself, Black Star. I know what must be done. What bothers me is that the General still refuses to take any kind of action, so we can regain our lost ground. Red Cyclone couldn't comprehend the superior's way of thinking. Our General is planning ahead, so that you should learn from him. These generals slightly angered the Crimson Griffin, but he knew that his companion was telling the truth. Perhaps he should have been a bit more perspective. Regardless of failures they had suffered, the spirits of the Griffins were still high. What they needed was a quick victory, an occasion that spurred just recently. In spite of his anger, Red Cyclone mentioned that he managed to get in contact with an old friend of his. He didn't reveal any details, but stated to Blackstar that he will meet her when they get to the main chamber. Once they were there, they both saw a female Griffin waiting for them with a grin. Red Cyclone took her call and respect. Good to see you again, G. Spare me the interjection, she said with an arrogant voice. What's the reason you brought me here, Red Cyclone? You know I got no interest in this war of yours. Oh, that I'm aware, the Griffin responded. But I thought you should know, an old friend of yours is hindering our progress. The Griffin referred to as G didn't know what Red Cyclone meant. She didn't have many friends, so remembering one shouldn't have been a problem. But still, he proceeded to tell her about a group of seven Pegasi who had continuously foiled the Griffith's plan of invasion. As the conversation went on, Blackstar kept deserving his partner with a bit of skepticism. Jean still to be unconvinced. I'll be interested to learn more about these winged ponies. Red Cycle showed her a picture of the group, and after a brief observation, she noticed a familiar looking blue Pegasus with a rainbow mane. She couldn't believe her eyes. The Crest of Griffith noticed her reactions upon seeing the Pegasi. Now you understand. These ponies have utterly taken your friend. She so you ain't coming back. The Pegasus is no longer going to fly alongside you. She so abandoned what you two had in common just so she could protect the other wimpy ponies. You want to look back? You most likely have to kill her teammates. Otherwise. The female Griffith's eyes flared with anger. And I thought Dash would have become a bit smarter after I left. Guess I'll go ahead to show her what stupid mistakes you made. Does this mean you're going to take part in the incoming attack on Ponyville? Kept me in, but I'm flying solo, the female responded. Suit yourself. I'll see you at 1100 hours. Without saying anything but or parting words, G left the chamber. So he appeared visibly sick at the Black Star. He approached Red Cyclone and asked, do you know what you're doing? Any kind of deception is good to lure someone to your side. Besides, she's pretty good. At least she'll give those equines a hard time. I just hope your strategy won't backfire at you again. Blackstar muttered to sweet and see. We're going to enjoy this. <laughs> the Crescent Griffith laughed evilly. 1100 hours. Point your air space. Rainbow Daz was taking a well-deserved rest among the fluffy clouds. Any military affairs from the Griffins have ceased for about two months, with only small battles going on as they tried to recapture some cities. 
Once late, Applejack, Rarity, Pinkie Pie, and Twilight Sparkle kept their eyes open and led the ponies under their command through a successful team of victories. It seemed that it was only a matter of time before the Griffiths could finally ask for a peace settlement. The Pegasi from Aurora's squad were now off duty most of the time, so they took this precious breather to spend time on having fun rather than fighting. But on this day, while Rainbow was swimming through the clouds, our communicator suddenly beat. With lightning bolts, he seemed very nervous. The Blue Pegasus asked her to calm down unless he explained the whole situation. The Griffiths are on the move again. Gales report indicate they're heading towards Pollyfield. Come back to Carolot. We gotta scramble. ASAP. I'm on it. Mabel replied, and after seeing the party the base, said to herself, Finally, some action. I don't mind peace at all, but these guys are just asking for it throughout being. The second she got within Carolot vicinity, Rainbow noticed her friends flying toward her, and said they couldn't afford to waste much time. The Rainbow Main Flyer instantly joined in the formation, next to Firefly. She mostly to every point that a large group of bandits was sighted coming in from Cloudsdale. Rainbow briefly drowned herself in thoughts, which she remembered her hometown, but heard every word that Firefly was saying. It was seen that the Griffiths were targeting three major areas of Ponyville, so you have the Lakers, known to be a sort of food bunker for the town, Main Square, and even rumors that they were trying to attack from the outskirts. This would allow them to flank in and defeat any pony within the town's perimeter. As the League Mayors were approaching Pinefile, Firefly wanted to distribute the ponies to guard specific areas. I'll stay at the town, sir. Supposedly that's where the main attack force will appear. Rainbow, you're going to defend Sweet Apple Lakers, while Butterfly will stay on with the outskirts. Let's make sure nothing bad will happen behind our backs. You two get to choose a distant League Mayor for assistance. Rainbow picked mentally, and Fire Fireside chose Derpy. The Raven Pegasus showed signs of excitement, as he was able to fly alongside her idol of some sort. Lightning Bolt and Cloud Kicker joined up with Firefly. Remember to work together. We have a better chance as a team. If you encounter any Griffiths, you're clear to a gate to take down. Rock Squadron, fly! The seven Pegasi split, with Fluttershy and Derpy flying south towards the Yellow Mare's Collides. Rainbow took a course to the north. She was notified that Applejack and her family were willing to provide any possible support. Medley wondered what she would mean by that, and Rainbow reminded her of the pies that the ponies used to transfer from Appaloosa a some time ago. They were kept in Applejack's barn, and like a giant fritz, thanks to the magic cold cake provided every few days. The pies were not only fresh and digestible, they could also be used as effective weapons. <sighs> only in a pony fic, folks. Only in a pony fic. Gail contacted them and reminded them that the bandits may approach the acres within 10 minutes. Both of the flyers prepared themselves. Their opponents appeared as predicted. It was a group of nearly six griffins, the majority of them coming from Northwind Squadron. Rainbow recognized Sekaros, while Medley caught a glimpse of Edge, who hailed from his own team. None of them knew they were being watched by someone from the shadows. 11 2300 hours. Pinefield Town Square. Firefly, Lightning Ball, and Cloud Kicker were already engaged in dogfights with several griffins. Their arrival came sooner than expected, but the three Pegasi were not alone in this fight. While Apple Bloom was helping her sister at the acres, her friends, Lee Bell and Skulu, could finally test their latest contraption, a homemade catapult. Using several objects they happened to gather in the past few weeks, the Phillies continuously launched them at the feathered warriors. Not only broke their concentration on battling the Pegasi, but also rendered them vulnerable to their attacks. Since the Ponyville even helped them recollect the objects that could be used as abnormal ammunition. Slip, having come with Edge's squadron, tried to destroy the Capel several times, but each of his attempts were foiled by either the Mirage Pegasi or the Cumar Crusaders launching food at him. Frustrated beyond belief in having suffered heavy damage, plus having an orange stuck in his beak, the Griffin was forced to flee, with several of his companions following suit. However, some stayed were brave for the fight to end. Firefly and her friends fought bravely and eventually, after an hour of a long battle, managed to defeat the majority of the assailants, and suffering only minor bruises. The message scaled and the main Pollyville airspace was successfully defended. Firefly also reported that no Griffiths were sighted on the outskirts, with the exception of Jet. Along with Derpy, she classed with him and managed to hold the attacker away. This earned both Pegasi praise from the Lear, who told her to move towards Sweet Apple Lakers to assist Rainbow Dash and Medley. I said that Firefly suddenly sunk mid-air. Derpy noticed it. Fluttershy, is something wrong? She asked. I, I think the air's changing. It's becoming heavy. Something bad's going to happen. Grey Mare had no idea what her friend meant, but as she suddenly screamed, Rainbow! It started flying at high speed. Derby tried to keep up and learned something more, but Fluttershy simply said they had to get to Applejack's farm quickly, or a terrible thing will occur. 12-3200 hours. 
So you have all the beakers. <laughs> Rainbow Dash and Medley had managed to drive the Griffiths away. Thanks to Applejack's stockpile of frozen apple pies, the two flyers put to good use by throwing them straight at their foes' beaks. Despite mild warmth that was usually present at this time of year, the apple weapons were at least a good distraction. What if Griffith had to avoid being smacked by an incoming pie, it was left wide open for Rainbow or Medley to attack him. Eventually, all of them left the area. Puff, Pink, and Sign were now helping the Apple family with gathering the pies to hit the ground, when suddenly Rainbow heard a female voice from above. Looking good as always, a dash. The Blue Pink just looked up, and first she thought it was a hallucination or something, but after she approached the figure and spoke to her, she suddenly instantly recognized it. It was her ex-friend, a female Griffith with an attitude matching her own. Gilda, what, what are you doing here? Can't you tell? She replied nonchalantly. I just wanted to visit an old friend of mine. Look, I'm kind of sorry for what happened back then. You know, it's okay with you, Dash. I want to talk to you about it alone. Gilda added, looking at Medley. Green Pegasus was looking at her as well, trying to figure out what she had in mind. Female Griffith didn't make a friendly impression on her. Rainbow remembered how Gilda acted when Pinkie Pie threw a party in her honor, and it turned out to be a giant set of pranks, which the Pegasus herself had made. Gilda's outburst and her declaration that ponies are nothing but a lame bunch of dweebs led to the ending their friendship. It was highly surprising that Gilda wanted to apologize all of a sudden. Rainbow believed her words. She asked Medley to wait for her while Silco talked to an old friend, but the Green Pegasus was reluctant to do so. Rainbow, I have a bad feeling Think about this. She doesn't seem friendly. You know, kid, appearances can be deceiving. Look, it won't take long. It'll just be a short talk between old friends. Nothing bad will happen. Really? Neither the ponies noticed Gilda's chuckling. Medley still tried to persuade Rainbow not to go. I don't know. What if it's a trap? I don't know about me. As far as I know, Gilda's not interested in taking a part in this war. Right, T? She exclaimed to the female Griffith. That's right. If I wanted to kill any ponies, I would have joined the Griffith army as soon as the war begun. Does he think? Gilda told Medley with a smug. The green flyer still seemed untouched. Rainbow then said, Listen, if I don't come back within ten minutes, you're free to call the rest of the team and start searching for me, okay? R okay, Medley replied. R Rainbow then joined Gilda, and the two flew off to the clouds above. The young Pegasus was still having many doubts in her mind, where her communicator beat, and Firefly asked for a report on the whole situation. When Medley told her that Rainbow had went off to talk to an old Griffin friend, the Pegasus yelled at her with frustration. Go after them right now! I can put my cutie mark that this is going to be a setup. We'll be there soon. Keep an eye on them from a safe distance and monitor a fence for us. Do not engage the Griffiths under any circumstances. You understand, kid? Yes, Floss. I, I'm i sorry. Medley spattered. It's all right. Don't blame you. I just can't help but think about the sudden exhausting act as an anything else than a trap. Watch yourself. Flash out! Medley started flying slowly to the location where Rainbow's ass and Gilda flew. She felt bad for not standing up to her friend, being unable to convince her to stay. But she knew it wasn't a good time to blame herself. 13,400 hours. Find your air space. Gilda led Rainbow Dash through the sea of clouds until he reached a certain point where the female griffin stopped. The blue flyer asked her, So, G, what do you want to talk about? It's not like there's a war going on or anything like that. And she adds sarcastically. Gilda turned around, and her yellow eyes rested on the Pegasus. She was still trying to resist the anchor within. Her mind was focused on learning Rainbow's alignment. I'm just curious. Are you getting along with other ponies? Especially your wing mares? While Rainbow wasn't expecting that kind of question, she answered positively. The Griffith asked further questions about her allies. But seeing that every passing minute, Gilda was slowly losing patience. Rainbow had no idea what these questions were supposed to mean. Finally, the female Crimson rinsed out her own communicator and uttered a single word, Go. All in seconds, four of Griffiths suddenly burst from the clouds, scaring them and surprising Rainbow Dash. Before she could react, each of them grabbed one of her legs and held tight with her claws. The little Pegasus was completely immobilized. Gilda! What the hell is this? She exclaimed angrily. The Griffith roared with laughter. Ha <laughs> ha! I can't believe it. You fell for the old trick of the book. Seriously, what's wrong with you, Dash? I see those ponies have changed you completely. You made a huge mistake by staying with them, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to punish you for it. Her words were filled with malice. Rainbow tried to free herself from the Griffith's grasp, but all attempts failed. She looked at guilt and disbelief. You tricked me! 
Sears Coin kills a lot again. Finally caught on. A little too late, though. The Griffin slowly flew at the rainbow, stared at her eyes for a little while, before she grabbed the Pegasus flank with a claw without warning. Rainbow groaned in pain when Sir Talus pierced her vest and coat. Gilda looked at her menacingly before punching her in the stomach. Moments later, Gilda started headbutting Rainbow and pecking Rainbow in the forehead between punches. While the four Griffins that were holding Dash kept laughing, the female attacker continuously attacked Rainbow Dash. Oh my, Gilda hit her so hard Rainbow's head forehead started bleeding. Melody was close to the vicinity and hid in the clouds. Remembering Firefly's order to stay put and not fight the feathered soldiers. But seeing Rainbow Dash being in immense pain was unbearable to watch for the Green Pegasus. She quickly reported to Firefly that Gilda is torturing Rainbow and asked her to reach as from as fast as possible. The response was a positive. See so and the pe other Pegasi had run into another flight of Griffiths, currently busy driving them off. For Melody said, Do not try to free Rainbow. You girls have a please. I ordered you not to engage the Griffiths, Medley, Firefly reminded her. I know that, but I can't ignore a friend in need. Give me fast, but I'm afraid I cannot comply to your order. She sounded a little desperate. Kid, don't do anything stupid! You don't stand a chance against them! They will kill you! Firefly yelled. Just wait for us, we're on our way! But Medley was determined to help Rainbow, even if it meant putting her life in danger. She made up her mind. Firefly kept calling her to stop. The green pegasus cut off the link and flew straight towards the griffins. Rainbow was panting heavily. Gilda pummeled her relentlessly, leaving blank, hard marks and a few bruises on the pegasus body. When the griffin came closer again, delivering another painful punch in Rainbow's stomach, the blue fire asked with a broken voice, Why? Why are you doing this? Gilda responded by slapping Rainbow's cheek over the right wing and shying. Why? Need I remind you of the humiliation I experienced from you and your pony dweebs? I think you would become smarter under my absence, but staying with them has apparently brainwashed you. It's just as Red Cyclone told me. Rainbow suddenly looked at her head upon hearing that name. It became clear for her. Red Cyclone somehow convinced Gilda to join them by stating that the police made the Blue Pegasus their slave of a sort. So he tried to explain to the Griffin that he had been tricked, but the half lion eagle didn't listen and slowly ran her talons across Rainbow's cheek, causing great pain to her. Rainbow Dash! Medley suddenly flew from behind, surprising everyone. Striking one of the Griffiths holding Rainbow with full strength, another of sails were sent plummeting down. Before anyone could react, the Green Pegasus flew into another opponent and swiftly kicked him in the beak, falling with a powerful buck in the neck. He too fell down. Rainbow was free, albeit wounded. Once again, if you listen closely, you can hear the sound of a lot of people gasping at the idea that a WOMAN saved another woman. I know! It's almost like this series is based off of badass women doing badass things. I'm shocked too, really. Does this happen often in Pony Fix? Surprisingly, yes. I just don't always get them. Hold oh, Rainbow, before they get you, I'll try to hold them off. Kid? The Blue Pig is just asked. I thought I told you to stay and wait. Or did ten minutes pass already? She chuckled. I'm sorry for not listening to you, Rainbow, but I couldn't ignore the situation any longer. I knew something ha bad would happen, and before Medley could finish the sense, she suddenly heard Gilda appearing right behind her, saying, Catch ya! The Green Pig is a squeal in pain, but for using the opportunity when Medley was not focused on her surroundings, her wings were now in Gilda's grass. She attempted to weak herself free, and even hit her cat there. Gilda only tightened her grip further, causing extreme torment to Medley. Ah! Stop! Stop the hurts! She cried. It's supposed to hurt. I hate when someone ruins my fun. You'll regret it. Rainbow, help! Rainbow watched in horror. Anting immediately. She tried to attack Gilda in hopes of freeing her friend, but Griffin exclaimed, You come any closer, Dash. I'll pluck her wings and she'll never fly again. The threat shocked the blue pigasus. You wouldn't! What a bit! Gilda asked sadistically. Leave her out, this. You like set your events did on your opponent. Let Medley go, Gilda. Now! Rainbow screamed. A few of Griffin couldn't help but laugh. Seeing both Pegasus I earlier made mercy. And to think we used to be friends. You're an even bigger loser than before. Compared to you, I'm not restricted by any feelings. It's very practical. See, I was satisfaction. Rainbow was trying to control her emotions, but it was very difficult. She suddenly started gasping for air, feeling dizzy. Gilda noticed it. It seems to hurt you a little too much. What happens when you're undecided? Curse you! Rainbow commanded. Gilda started laughing again. 
Why are you playing me? If you're a little smart, I might have refrained from doing some rough stuff. You have no one to blame but yourself in this situation. So he said with a wicked grin on her face, noise she hit Rainbow straight in her weak spot with full force. The blue pegasus stared at the griffin while playing his press and merely trying to free herself once more. What's we go, yo? Rainbow, da 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 da. She's just trying to. Ah! Dilly increased the strength of her grip on her wings even further, yanking them brutally. Did I tell you you could move or talk? Stay quiet if you know what's good for you, unless you want to become a wingless dweeb. One of her talents pierced Medley's left wing. The young mare yelped. She wasn't bluffing. Gilda could be really attempting even to rip her wings off. To a Pegasus, losing its wings was a fate worse than death. Medley would also no longer be helping, of Ram helping Rainbow Dash and the rest of Marauder's squadron. She wasn't struggling anymore. Poor Medley was terrified beyond belief. Was quivering as she sobbed. Gilda listened closer to her. What's the matter, cry baby? Want me to go on? She whispered seriously. No, no please. Don't, don't hurt me. Medley begged. Don't hurt me. <laughs> That's more like it. Now she was holding all the cards in this confrontation, Gilda turned to the perilous rainbow again. My like, Dash, I'm very disappointed in you. Perhaps there's a way to fix this. The blue fire didn't know what she meant, so Gilda explained, Take a look around. As much as I hate to admit it, Ponies and Griffiths have so much more in common than you may think. Both races are fighting for what they believe in, or so they think. Black Star and Red Cyclone hold the Griffith army in their toe, do whatever they fe feel with their soldiers. And they dragged you into this war too, Rainbow guessed. Yes, Dass, but only because I wanted to see you again. I really hoped we could try to be friends again. I see those ponies are completely brainwashed you, however. So he said the only way to get you back is to kill them all. Rainbow couldn't believe what she was hearing. No, this was a Gilda. The Griffiths she used to know. She changed completely. The Blue Pegasus knew that she was running low on time and stamina. So I asked Gilda how she plans to fix their problem. There are two ways you could choose, Dash. One, you could try to stop me. But then, I'll kill this Pegasus. Or two... You can abandon your squadron and Equestria all together and join me. Why should I want to do that? Rainbow asked. Because together, we're better than anyone else. We can start our own campaign, become the greatest and coolest flyers this world's ever known. Think about it, Dash. Neither of those choices were beneficial for Rainbow. She chose to abandon Equestria, so she would be branded a traitor and most likely banished, never to return. And turning back on her friends was against her nature as the element of loyalty. But she couldn't bring herself to leaving Bentley's fame to Gilda's talents. She was somberly the Green Pegasus. So, Dash, what's it gonna be? The Griffin was getting impatient. You! Griffin, Gilda's face lightly went with smirk. A fast seconds later, when Rainbow exclaimed, I'm sorry, but I can't bear to Equestria or my friends. I will never leave them behind. You're not giving me a choice at all, G. Medley. I don't know how, but I will save you. Green Pony welcomed the statement with a big, worried smile. I knew you would say that to us. After all, you are an element of loyalty. You are always try your friends over everything else. That includes you, Medley, Rainbow said with a shaky voice. And er our team, every pony is equal. No pony is more or less important. You are my friend and my companion. Does you ever forget it? Gilda was getting annoyed by her failure to convince Rainbow. She thrust her talents into Medley's wings, making her scream to ride in pain. Oh, how touching. I'd be probably moved to tears if I wasn't trying to kill ya. Rainbow flew directly Gilda. Once he could hear her, the Griffin moved Medley in front of her and tried to use her as a living shield. Little Pegasus looked at Gilda with disgust. You see, since Cowley Tactus was unworthy of a Griffin, suddenly the feather tormentor increased altitude while squeezing both of Medley's wings, yanking and bending sharply. Help me! To the horror of both her and Rainbow, a sound of snapping bones could be heard in dead silence. Medley fell silent. Rainbow stopped dead where she was. Gilda laughed loudly. The one the Griffin still present in the area notified her about oncoming enemy reinforcements. She noticed Moran's squadron was approaching. Oh crud. And I was just starting to have fun. Oh, we'll finish this another day. Dash. Here. Catch. Saying this, he released Medley. The pair of Pegasus was unable to move her wings. So Rainbow flew forward and caught her. She saw Gilda leaving. See you next time. For your sake... I hope you be smart to the day. Find a reason to fight, or else! She left the airspace, laughing maniacally. 
Ripple looked at her eyes and grinding her teeth in anger. Gilda, you will pay dearly for this. 14, 1800 hours. Airspace above Pineville. Rainbow turned her attention to Medley, cradled in her arms. The green pegasus was sobbing, but this eased Dad's worry. At least he was alive. But the rings, I, I can't hold them. I can't even feel them. Medley cried. Rainbow, did she? Calm down. Your wings are still intact. Rainbow assured her. They seemed fractured, however. Medley tried to flat them, but only sent a stream of pain to her body. I, I heard my bones were breaking. Rainbow, I was so, so scared. Unable to restrain her feelings anymore, Medley burst into tears. The blue pegasus hung up to her gently, but she was on the first of crying herself. Her voice was still shaking. Stop blubbering. Everything will be okay. The rest of the Mirage squad were approached him. Fleshlight gasped upon seeing Rainbow all scratched and beaten up. So he came closer to uh, try to lick her bleeding wounds. Rainbow, who did this to you? Cloud Kicker asked, visibly shaking. My old friend, Kilda. She replied with Madonna's voice. You remind me, Medley needs you more girls. Lightning Bolt inspected Medley briefly. The point's contestant was pretty bad. Her wings are badly damaged, maybe even broken. We must get her to the infirmary. Firefly came closer. Medley looked at her with misty eyes and groaned. Ross, I'm sorry for disobeying you. Like, I just... It's okay. You don't have to explain yourself. The pink mirror interrupted. I can only praise you in this situation. Thanks to your efforts, Rainbow is still alive, and so are you. But, I've disobeyed your order. Medley couldn't comprehend why the leader was praising her instead of being angry. He did what was best. If the soldier follows orders blindly, it will slowly lose its free will, Firefly explained. A free will is what defines a sentient being. Without that will, you might just be a slave. It's one of those things you should know. Those without strong wills can easily be turned to evil. Cloud Kicker what Firefly meant by that last statement. Firefly continued. Sometimes an order isn't alone is enough. You need to follow your mind and heart as well, just like you did, Medley. You can be proud of yourself. Medley smiled dimly. Firefly didn't order Cloud Kicker and Lightning Bolt to carry Medley to Carolina Hospital as quickly as possible. Once they left, the Pink Pegasus called out to the others to return to the capital. But Rainbow was just hovering midair, looking at her hooves. Fizzing was getting blurry to her. This is all my fault, she muttered to herself. Firefly and Fluttershy approached her. Rainbow was bleeding for several wounds, had difficulties with maintaining a straight flight, and seemed unstable. Is it very real too, Rainbow? Fluttershy suggested. It's just a few scratches. I don't even feel them. I'm fine. Das replied and strangled his monotone again. When he yelled Pegasus for your area P, Rainbow yelled, I SAID I'M FINE! Fluttershy shivered. Firefly questioned Rainbow's outburst, but the Pegasus started blubbering, saying each word louder than the previous one. It's all my fault. It happened because of me. I trusted Gilda. I thought we could be friends again, but she played on my trust. It takes my naive team medley almost died. Firefly grabbed Rainbow's shoulder, looked at her eyes, trying to calm her down. Relax, Rainbow. You're both alive. It could have been much worse. Worse? Rainbow screamed. None of this would have happened if I wasn't a complete idiot. This... I was... I... Where I think this could say anything, Rainbow unleashed a very loud, chilling scream. She couldn't hold it anymore. She released her entire frustration, anger, and contempt for Gilda. Firefly only stared at her, dumbfounded. But Firefly was visibly sinking and scared. The old Pegasus never saw Dash acting like this before. When the Pegasus rainbow screen died out, a stream of tears flew from her eyes. She couldn't see anything, now it was just gazed at the clouds, unable to move anything except her wings. This is my fault. All oh, my fault. She stammered something uncontrollably. Where's I came closer to Rainbow and gave her a hug, trying to sell her emotions. She said, Rainbow, let's go back. Then the blue ace started dagging dizzy again. She tried to cat raise out her hoof for help. Suddenly her eyes closed, she fell on Fireside's shoulder. The yellow fire pink. Rainbow, Rainbow, what's wrong? Wake up! But the blue pig is just didn't quaver. First I was fearing the worst. No, this can't be. Rainbow, please wake up. Please don't die. Rainbow! Come on, calm down, butterfly. Rainbow's alive. She just, she just collapsed due to blood loss. Let's get her to infirmary stat. Where's I stopped trembling? Rainbow's numerous wounds were left mostly untreated. The two flyers took their, their her friend on her backs, flew back to Carolot to join the others. When even when she was unconscious, tears still tripped from Rainbow's eyes, along with blood. Her soul was shattered. She experienced betrayal by someone who used to be her friend. 
and tried to kill her new friend. Firefly could tell Rainbow was suffering. Even in her sleep, it felt sorry for her. When the Emerald's Pegasi saw the Blue Flyer saint, he felt worried too. Only hope the situation wasn't as severe as it seemed. It wasn't. It was much worse.